Rage 2 is a curious game. The original Rage was an incredibly hyped release that was backed by a legacy of greatness. Then it came and went, and despite it not being a complete disaster like some people made it out to be, it quickly became a punchline. Rage was known more for the ill-fated term mega textures far more than as a game with any real identity. A sequel to Rage seemed improbable. Then one Walmart leak and an E3 announcement later, and it was thrust onto the scene. Bright neon colors, a huge wasteland, and a vehicular spectacle is what Rage 2 was promising, but does it deliver on that original promise? That's been a difficult question to answer for me, because on its surface, Rage 2 is a well-made open-world shooter. Development is being led by Avalanche Software, the makers of Just Cause and Mad Max, with id, the makers of Doom, assisting in development. Now on paper this seemed like dream game material. The open world chaos and vehicular destruction from Just Cause and Mad Max, the refined, intense, first person shooting action and speed from id, what could possibly go wrong? In all honesty, nothing really did go wrong, but Rage 2 isn't more than the sum of its parts, it's literally just the sum of its parts. Despite the pedigree behind the scenes, the game itself feels washed down. A simple, more plain version of each side when they're at their peak. The open world, while massive, is very bland. Vehicle physics are varied, but never fun, exciting, or dangerous. The shooting, while competent, is also missing an edge. A certain level of in-your-face brutality that Doom really excelled is completely gone here. I've seen many people compare this game to Borderlands or Mad Max, but in all respects it really does feel like Rage. Despite the different developers and the long time between them and a very different approach to story and gameplay, it actually does feel like a direct sequel. Most of the same problems that plagued the first game are back here in full force. The gameplay systems are one area where it does feel a bit bigger than its predecessor. New abilities can be discovered in upgrade stations known as arcs that are strewn around the world. The same goes with arc weapons and vehicles and my recommendation is to hunt them down immediately. A handful of abilities and weapons will be doled out through the main story, but a majority of them are just out there waiting to be discovered. These weapons and abilities can really add a lot of dynamic moments to the combat. Ejecting out of my car and doing a double jump ground pound to give some enemies, then wing sticking three more with one skillful toss while shotgunning people across the room always felt good and was fun to pull off. When I used the abilities and mixed it up, the action can definitely hit some high notes. Unlike Doom, however, it never felt necessary to really mix it up and get in there. The basic starter weapons are so effective and the AI of the enemy so poor that standing still and blasting enemies from long range, that boredom was the only real motivation for using my full toolset and abilities. The open world suffers from this as well. Despite being technically proficient and running at a rock solid frame rate, the open world just doesn't offer anything of note. It's the most bare bones of checklist open world design that harkens back to the climb a tower, take an outpost mentality of an old Far Cry game. Within an hour or two you will have seen and done every activity possible in the open world and then you'll have to repeat that over and over again for another 15 hours. It gets old very quickly. The vehicles that take you from place to place don't fare any better and that was very disappointing. Mad Max, for all of its problems, really nailed the physics and weight of the cars. Destruction was satisfying and car upgrades and combat were thrilling and could lead to dynamic situations in an otherwise plain open world. None of that carries over to Rage 2. Only one vehicle can receive upgrades and they are mostly just new weapons. There's nothing cosmetic, you don't really need to engage in that system. It's overall a massive step down from their previous titles. My problem was you just don't feel invested in the car combat and whenever it arises, it's so throwaway and hollow that even when you're going full speed and destroying convoys, the excitement is never there. Hell, even if you're walking down a road, enemy cars will drive past you and take pot shots, but then they never pull up and actually try to attack you. The game never feels like it's out to get you, and the passive mentality of any enemy in the open world almost makes it feel like an apocalyptic theme ride more than a hostile battleground. 
Rage 2 is such a hard game to describe, but overall it just feels like it's missing that edge. Despite the attempts at stylized neon colors and glitched out menus, none of the game carries that bravado or attitude. The main character, a male or female of your choice named Walker, is painfully bland. All of the attempts at being cool are awful, not in the awful B-movie type of way, but just awful. It's not exciting, the story is merely okay and never offends, but it doesn't ever create moments. Despite completing the game, I can't really recall any character names or set pieces that lasted past me just seeing them in front of my own eyes. And as soon as I was done playing, I would forget about anything I just did. On the flip side, despite those problems with Rage 2, it's technically well made. It's not buggy, it looks and performs incredibly well, and all of the pieces that make it up are sound. None of it just stands out and personally I was a bit let down because both studios in the past have reached much greater peaks than what Rage 2 brings. For what it's worth, Rage 2 is a bit of a step up from the original and is well made. If you're itching for an open world game to dig into for a dozen hours or so, you could do much worse in this game. The problem is you can also do much better. That was my review. I am Namtox. I write for RectifiedGaming.com. If you want to read the review, go check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. I give Rage 2 a 6.5. You know, it's not terrible, but it's also nothing that's going to last past you playing it and turning it off. So I hope you guys enjoyed that review. Stay tuned right here if you want to see more. We have Total War Three Kingdoms next, and I will see all of you next time. Goodbye, everybody.